Is street photography something that you've always wanted to do, but you're scared to go out in public and do it? Well, stick around because I have five secrets that will boost your confidence and eliminate your fears. And number five is my personal favorite because it will guarantee to eliminate any fear that you have. Stick around, guys. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. I'm Jaime Alvarez, AKA James Alcatraz. And today I wanna to talk about fear. Fear has a powerful way to control us emotionally and it has the ability to manipulate us in ways that we can't even comprehend. Now, what I've learned is when you conquer your fear, that's when your best work happens. Because when you're overrun by fear, artistically you suffer, but more importantly, you suffer. Number one, use your phone. Now, when you're using your camera, this big old lens attracts a lot of people and it's kind of hard to hide what you're doing if, if you want to start off slow. So when you compare the two, you know, this one is a lot less conspicuous than this one. So this one's a good confidence booster. And I think over time you work yourself up from this to maybe a digital camera to a DSLR with one of these bad boys on it. Now, by starting off with your phone, it makes it a lot easier for you to be out in public photographing people. It's not as obvious what you're doing if that's what you're trying to go for. And socially, it's more accepted. It could almost look like you're taking a selfie, you know, if you're taking a picture of something. And I know I personally, whenever I see somebody taking a selfie, I give them as much space as they need and just leave them alone. So it might even have an effect where if you're taking a picture of somebody or something, they'll look away because they don't want to be bothering you. Number two, start by photographing objects, not people. That's kind of how I got my start in street photography. I've always wanted to do it, but I felt weird being out in public taking pictures of people, especially on a college campus. Uh, so when I decided to jump into street photography, I started off by taking pictures of alleyways, things that have always interested me, things that I've noticed over time, and I found out that that built up my confidence a lot. Now, the, the key to tip number two is over time, gradually work on taking photographs of objects and then start working your way to maybe scenes where people are more open to being photographed. But work your way up. You don't have to jump in head first. Photography isn't something that you have to turn into a, a thrill or a rush. It, it can be at times. If you're shy, that's okay. Make sure you don't make, put yourself in an uncomfortable position because when you do put yourself in an uncomfortable position, other people will sense that and it might give off the wrong vibes. And the last thing you need is for people to feel uncomfortable when you're taking photographs. Okay, so now you've built up your confidence a little bit. Number three is guaranteed to get you to that next step. Number three, if you absolutely have to, ask for permission to take people's pictures. Now, when I first started doing uh, street photography, I didn't ask people for permission because I wasn't afraid. I felt comfortable. But there are times when I didn't feel comfortable and I asked the, the person there if I could take a picture of them because it was a beautiful scene and they were enjoying themselves. And I, you know, maybe they were reading a book or something like that. And the last thing I want to do is be up in their face taking a picture. So sometimes asking for, the, for their permission eliminates any fear, any misunderstandings. They know what you're doing, you know what you're doing. You take the picture, you thank them, you move on. And you keep doing that. And you do that over and over and over. And you start to understand the human psychology. You can kind of start reading people's personalities before you even get, before you even talk to them. And that's something that you can't just understand without trying it. So when you ask for permission, it almost guarantees that uh, it will eliminate any fear that you have. Do it over and over and over again you'll start to develop a sense of confidence that you didn't know you even had. Number four, look for opportunities to take pictures of people that are wanting to get their pictures taken. When you start doing street photography, you'll, you'll notice how often people are taking pictures of themselves or uh, in groups. Take that as an opportunity to say, hey, uh, I'm so-and-so, I'd love to take your picture. Here's my card, here's my information. Let me take a picture, I'm gonna edit it, it'll be on my social media, check it out. Now you see that? You just made friends, you networked, and that builds confidence tremendously. And I know that one of the reasons you're 
scared to do street photography is because of, of the communication with people. When you see people taking the pictures of themselves or in groups, you're offering them a service. Almost think of it as you're helping each other out. And they're be doing something social anyways. They're taking pictures out in public. So might as well take that as an opportunity. And when you start mixing these tips, uh, you start to develop almost like a routine. You know, you start small, you start warming up, you start heating up, and then before you know it, you're, you're taking pictures of people in cabs, you're taking pictures of people in buses, and you know, that doesn't have to be your end goal. You know, if, if taking pictures of people in groups that give you permission is, is your end goal, perfect. You can stop right there. Number five, and my personal favorite, have a plan if you are confronted by somebody. Now, I've been doing this for a while and I have not had any problems whatsoever. And maybe it's just my luck, but if you were to be confronted, you have to have a plan. Surefire way is to know how to de-escalate a situation. This is a life lesson that you're about to get right now. Immediately, if they're at a level 10, knock them down to a level five. And oftentimes that's done just by saying, hey, I understand you, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. Uh, I'm a professional photographer, and then this is when you gotta start, um, you know, unfortunately maybe lie, but that's, you're getting yourself out of a situation. I would just simply say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm doing a college uh, project, I apologize, I'll erase the, the, the image. And that's what you should offer. Always offer the ability to erase the image for them and show them. And for a little bonus tip, one thing I've learned is to have a, uh, like a card or something like that and you can buy these relatively cheap online just have your instagram or you know your website something where it kind of lends a little bit of professionalism and the reason why i think having a, a plan in place in case something does happen is the most important is because you're prepared for the worst and when you're doing street photography nothing like that really ever happens i think i've only had one problem and to be honest with you it was my fault. I should have read the room a little better. This, uh, this, this lady was eating food and I said, hey, do you mind if I take a picture of you? And she said, absolutely not. And she didn't get upset with me, but I kind of already knew I was kind of, you know, treading on a line. So don't feel like the worst is going to happen. As a matter of fact, the worst rarely happens. And you can watch a million videos like this. If it does happen, just have a plan. All right, everyone. Those are my five tips that are guaranteed to elevate your confidence, crush your fears, and take your photography to that next level. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Fear is something that you need to conquer. And if you don't, you won't realize your true potential. Now get out there and pursue your passions.